Hello, so glad you could join me again. It's a beautiful day here. I hope it's a beautiful day wherever you're at. What I have here is a 16 by 20 pre-stretch canvas. I have it covered with a thin coat of liquid white. During this painting and all my videos, any information you need and all the colors I use will come right across the screen up here. So today I thought we'd do a scene with maybe a night, maybe a moon, a couple sets of different snow-capped mountains, and maybe a little stream coming through with some trees, maybe put some lightning in. So let's get started. It's a two-inch brush, already loaded up with liquid white, covered the whole canvas with a thin coat. Now we're going to go into some blue color. We're going to make it a darker nighttime, nighttime scene. Criss cross strokes in the corner, just like that. We're going to make it dark. Maybe have it dark right where the moon is going to be. Loading it up on both sides. So we're going to blend this in, blend the sky in. We got all kinds of things happening in the sky. I'm adding a little bit of purple, like a purple color, make it a little darker. Give you the different flavor. Maybe put it down here. Who knows? It's your world. You can do it however you'd like. I'm going to take this blender brush now. I'm going to blend some of the sky in. I'm going to start out down here. It's going to blend right in with that liquid white that we have on, that we had on earlier, that we put on before we got started. Maybe here. And it's going to get lighter as it gets down to the horizon like it's supposed to. That's the way it is in nature. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're always trying to create and make illusions. Create illusions. Maybe this is dark here. Maybe it's, who knows. Maybe we're going to put our moon right in here. I'm going to come right over. Maybe we'll get some reflection happening down, down, who knows. I'm going to knock off some of the excess. I'm also using an odorless paint thinner. Clean the brush off, pick up some of that white. Kind of gets us a lighter color that I'm looking for. To bring it back up into here. Who knows? Maybe just like that. Step back and get a view of it. Okay, I said we're going to have a little moon. So I'm going to use my finger, hold your finger up and determine where you might want your moon to be. Maybe I'm going to put mine right here. Circular motion. And determining on how big you want it to be. How big you want it to look. I'm using titanium white and some liquid white to thin it out. Because we want that moon to pop. Have that white in there. More white. What we're going to do is we're going to blend this out. 
but by the moon, it's always got that hazy look to it. That's what we want to create, and we'll come back and highlight it again. Highlight the moon for the color. Okay, I'm going to take the blender brush, cleaning it off. We're just going to come in here and blend very lightly and outward. Outward. You want that sheen, that look where the moon might look. It's got that. Listen. All the way around it. Who knows how far it goes. Sometimes it's got that look misty. And some more titanium white on my finger. Liquid white to thin it. Come back in. And make the moon. Maybe we'll make it a bigger moon. That's more white. Just keep blending it in. like that. A little bit more white. Kind of round it off a little bit more. Maybe on this side it's got a shadow. You can put the shadow in just by taking some of the white paint off. Just like that. Now, we're going to get the liner brush. I told you we might have a little bit of lightning. I'm using some liquid white. And we'll load it up with titanium white. And liquid, liquid white. And the liner brush want to make some lightning, lightning strike coming down. Maybe maybe it comes down just like that. Hope you can see that. And maybe right here Just like that, a little bit of lightning happening in a, could be a summer, summer, but it's not, it's a winter, it's going to be a winter, a snowstorm, you know how sometimes in a, in a lightning, take a little roll of paint on the palette knife, and we're going to cut in some mountains, maybe our mountain is almost to the moon. Right to here. Just like that. Maybe it's a steep mountain. All we all we care about is the top edge. That defines the mountain. Gives you those peaks and that sharpness that you're looking for. We scrape off the rest on the bottom. Maybe this one goes right over here. Who knows? It's your world. 
Maybe there's a little one right there. Just scrape it off. Who knows, maybe this one. And then we got another peak up here. Another peak happening. Maybe that goes just like that. Just like that. Looks pretty good. Maybe there's a little thing happening right there. Okay. Now, we'll take a two inch brush. We're going to blend this mountain out some. Get your angles. Blend it in to where it Blends right down into the mist, the foot on the mountain. Just pull it here and there, there and here, and you can leave all kinds of things happening in here. Maybe this one is back further. Maybe you see how that runs down, this line here? Automatically pushes that other plateau back. And that can go just like that. Just blend it out. There are all kinds of different different things happening right there. I'm gonna clean that off. I'm gonna clean off my palette knife. I'm gonna come into some white because we're gonna highlight it. Highlight it where the where the moon might be hitting it. Using titanium white, roll of paint. Maybe it's right here. Just hitting on the top of that. Runs straight down. Want to wipe off your palette knife a little bit so you don't get that dark the blue color in there maybe just tapping it run it just like that that's how it's all broke that's what you want it looks like crevices and all kinds of things happening in the mountain. Maybe in our world I'm gonna put some more right over here. Maybe make the mountain out here. Gives it some gives it some more texture. More paint. Maybe in our world, maybe right over here. tapping it. Maybe that goes just like that. When that sun's popping on that corner right there. Maybe this you won't see very much. So what we can do is we'll take the other end of the brush, I mean the palette knife. There's a straight edge right there. We'll come in and highlight some of these smaller areas. like that. Maybe back here. The moon's just touching it. Okay. What I see is maybe a little bit more here. Just like that. real snowy there. We're going to take the titanium white and we're going to get some blue, halo blue. 
because we want to highlight it in titanium white. Kind of get it a marbly look. We're going to come in and here and there. Doesn't have to be all. Doesn't have to be all shaded. Some of it can stay dark. That way it looks like it's deeper. Like some of the crevices are it's a bigger area. Maybe right in here. Maybe here. Just barely tapping. Pull some of that white down. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll use a little bit more, maybe a little bit darker right in here. Maybe dark down here. Who knows? It's your world. Looks pretty good to me. I'm cleaning my brush off. My palette knife. I'm going to get the blender brush. We're going to tap the bottom of the mountain and pay attention to the lay of the mountain and get that same angles. All we're doing is making a mist down here because at the mountains you can tell when they're far off they're real misty. I'm going to tap the way the mountain is. Maybe it comes up just like that. Cleaning my brush off because you want to keep that. Want to keep that look. Maybe it goes. Who knows? Right off. Blends it all in. In the brush off. We're going to have uh, another set of mountains right in front here. We're going to use the same color, the same purple. A little roll of paint. Maybe these are not as not as peaky. A little bit of smaller mountains. You always want to keep that gap in between where you see the shadow or the mist. Because that gives it a nice separation. We're going to have some evergreen trees in here. Maybe a pond or maybe there's another little peak right here. Wherever you think. Wherever you think it might be. Maybe that goes down. Maybe that comes over. A little bit of rock formations in there. Looks pretty good. Got something happening here. Maybe that goes right down. Who knows? When we blend it all in, you'll see that the angles. Cleaning that blender brush again. 
and we're going to come in here and blend this like we did that back mount. Different angles. Whatever you think. Whatever kind of way you want it to look, that's exactly how it should look. Maybe this is going here, maybe it's coming that way. Maybe it's coming together. There's a little valley there. Maybe this one comes right over. Just like that. Just like that, blending it in. Get that little valley in there. Kind of make it a little bit of a wave look to it. A, a like a strokey wave. Okay. Looks like we got that happening pretty good. Clean the brush off again. Coming up here, getting some of the white color, titanium white, liquid white. Little roll of paint. Now we can determine where the moon's hitting on this one. Maybe it's right there. Maybe just a little bit. Because that's the way you see it. Just like cracking down a little bit there. Maybe over here. Maybe just a little bit. Maybe a little bit in that valley. See how it runs down? All I did was turn the palette knife. I got that angle. That angle that I thought. I thought, let me get something going here. Maybe there's some um, hitting right off of here. Just like that. Okay, maybe a little bit up here, just off the top of the mountain. Get a little roll of paint again. Maybe just where the sun or the moon's hitting. Just like that. a little bit more white maybe it comes right down here just barely touching just barely just two fingers to get that action going like that okay we'll take some of that blue color marble it and we'll come in and get some highlights going. Some of it I'm not going to highlight. I'm going to leave it dark. Sometimes that looks good too, just the way that looks with the dark in it. Here and there. There and here. Maybe a little bit more, a little bit lighter on this side. like that. Kind of take that edge off there. You can always come back in like I'm going to do and use a little bit more white. 
and just almost make it the way you want, the way you want it to look. That kind of sharpens that up. Okay, now the blender brush and tap like we did the mountain in the back to get that misty misty stuff happening and pay close attention to the lay of the mountain just like that here and there and there and here maybe it goes up who knows okay we got that going on now we're going to take our palette knife have some of that color the purple and some Prussian blue mix it we're going to make our area where we're going to have our little pond coming through our little stream Maybe our stream starts back here. And then the closer it gets to you, the bigger it'll get. Who knows, maybe it comes this way. paint who knows we have it come all the way down and as it gets closer to get wider That kind of breaks up already to give you that look of uh, that there's snow. There's snow and stuff built up, but you'll see as I have as I cover it in. Clean the palette knife off. Then we're gonna go into fan brush. Let's see. I'm going to go into some green color. I'm going to go into some liquid clear to thin it out since we got the mountain color. Got a lot of color around here. And we want this paint to stick so a thin paint will stick to a thick paint every time. So that's what I'm doing. I'm loading it up with some colors. Green. Both sides. And we want to determine where we want some trees to be. Maybe there's a tree right here. Right by the stream. Load up some more paint. Maybe there's another one right there. All I'm doing is tapping back and forth. Just tapping with the corner of the brush. Maybe there's a taller one there. Just tapping back and forth. How do you tap? bigger the tree gets that towards the bottom. Maybe there's some um, stuff happening back in here. But you can't really tell. Just some brush. Now we'll start on this side. Maybe this tree is a little bit further in front of the other ones. Turning the brush over. To load up more paint. 
and I'm just tapping. I said this was a winter scene. It feels 20 degrees colder right now as I'm painting this. <laughs> Maybe we'll put one here. And just tapping. And leaving areas where it's like in nature, trees don't grow perfect. Just here and there and there and here. Keep adding some of that liquid clear. It thins it out. And maybe we're going to have a... It's going to be a lesson today on painting evergreen trees. This is going to put a forest in here. All the way down. I tap harder. And it brings this one forward. If I had a tap lighter and left it shorter, it would have made it the same. Would have put it the same level. Another tree back here. I'm going to bring this one forward even more. So I just keep tapping. Pushes all those other ones back. Okay, let's let's see. Maybe we'll put a tall one right here. Just tap. Turn the brush over to get more paint. Leave some openings. Just like that. Maybe there is another one. Goes right up in the snow of the mountain. Just tapping it back and forth. And the more you tap back here, you can get all kinds of things where you can fill it in and make it really look like it's a forest. Like I did back and through there. So let's go here. Put this one more in front. Try to stay out of your way so you can really get the feel of what I'm doing. Just tapping. Put that one in front. Because the trees grow all front and back of each other and maybe this one here is a little one back here. Fill it in. Just like that. Maybe there's a big one right here. There is now. More paint. You always want to leave a space at the top. Makes it look more natural, more real. Just grabbing some more paint. I'm going to have it doing all kinds of different things here. Just tap it. Fill it in. Just like that. More liquid clear. Thin the paint out. We're using a sap green, a phalo green. Loading it up. Maybe over here, we're going to stick with a little smaller one, smaller tree. Maybe we'll put it right next to the other one. Just want to create the forest, give it the illusion that there's a forest there. With all kinds of critters. Now I'm going to put a big one here. Maybe put it right in front. Just like that pushes them all back here and there and there and here a little bit more paint have a 
come right down just like that a big Christmas tree maybe here I'm gonna put another smaller one back here fill it in and a lot of times you don't have to go all the way down with that line that line just helps you get some kind of a feel of where you want it where you want your tree how you want it just like that you want to leave some of that area back there open light comes through I'll make a big one right over here just like that barely tap all the way down right in front of the mountain if you notice with that shading in the back that little gap that we left with the mist it gives you some dimension there where it gives you your next level okay now maybe maybe we'll put a taller one right there this one I won't go down as far and you can see how that works here and there all the way down add some more paint just the way you think it should look that's exactly how it should be darker or darker as you go down We're going to fill all this in with some snow. Maybe, maybe one more on this side. One big one goes off the canvas. Here and there, tapping it. It's going across, filling it in. The further you get down. it look like it's a jungle or a forest <laughs> okay on the other side here I'm gonna put some more here tapping it back and forth Just like that. You can bring that one right out in front. Just from tapping it. Now I'm going to put one here. Behind there. Maybe you won't see all of it. Maybe you just see. Just like that. That's perfect. Maybe there's one tall one right there. Here and there. Tap. We got them all coming this way. And that's what we wanted to create. Maybe there's one back here that you can't see all of like the other one was. Just making some woods. Just making some evergreens. Trying to create the illusion that there's trees back there. And there's more than one. Gonna make a taller one here add some more liquid white or liquid clear I mean tapping it
back and forth. I'm going to put this one more in front. Just fill all that in. Now, we're almost getting done with the trees. I think we're going to put two more in here. Maybe one there. Sometimes the trees are so far, too far away that you can't really see all the branches. There's some separations there. Maybe we'll put a little stick there, a little. Loading it up with paint. Going back and forth. You can use one, go back to the other one. Add some more color. Just tap it all the way down. And by doing this, you get all those different things happening in there. It looks like a, it's a real brush trees. All kinds of stuff happening. And all we're doing is filling it in. Okay. Looks pretty snowy to me. This one won't come over as far. We're just going to tap that down and give it to look like there's some stuff happening. And the pond goes back into there. So, I'll leave that the way that is. I'm going to take a 2 inch fan brush. I'm going to load it up with some white, titanium white and some blue. Halo blue, want to get a snow look, just like that. Then we want to come in and just start dropping it in, wherever you think. Just like that. Maybe make it darker in here. closer to the trees because of the shadow. Make that look real. Come over to this side and do the same thing. Maybe have it come down right into the stream. I'm putting this color on because when we put the white on, it'll come through and it'll be shadows. bit more darker 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 blues maybe it goes just like that Kind of just scraping it in. What it does is it kind of blends everything in. And it takes that sharp edge off of where the trees would be. Just here and there. Just like that. Same thing over here. Just take the corner of the brush. Circular motions and just softens the edge. It's all kinds of things happening. Just like that. Could also be where there's some snow coming out. You have some grassy area. I'm going to load up with some uh, liquid clear. 
some blue color cleaning my brush off. I don't want to pick up too much. I don't want to pick up too much green in here now. I want it to be more of white. Load the fan brush up. Maybe Maybe it comes right over. Just like that. Maybe it kind of blends in. Maybe that kind and it blends in down there. I'm going to get that creek going now. You're going to have those highlights where it's darker right next to the water or right next to the ice. And where it's lifted up. Where it looks like there's some stuff happening there. Cleaning the brush off. Where it looks like the pond or the creek is sunken in some. some more white kind of diffuse that bring some of that snow right up to the deep right to where it might be Just like that. Now we'll get some snow going over here. More white. Get some snow drifts coming up here. your brush off. Try to get it as white as you can. More liquid white. All kinds of shadows happening there. Cleaning the brush off again. Really loading it up with some weight. You got all the blues happening now. That gives you your shadows. 
your shadow effect. I'm going to come in here and clean this up. Kind of step back and you look at it. You get different angles and whatnot. Okay, we're gonna take the pellet knife. We're gonna scrape in some twigs, branches here and there. Hope you can see that. That liquid white we put on. This is just scraping off the paint we have on and it's leaving the liquid white. Makes it look like there's a lot of stuff happening and all you use is a palette knife. Okay what we're going to do now is come in and do some trees with some snow. We'll put a little bit of a blue hue to it. A little bit of a blue blue snow and just come in and start tapping it like we did before. Here and there. This is going to have to be a little bit thinner because of all the paint we have on. Here and there, and there and here, using some liquid clear. Thinning it out. That's more like it. I hope you can see that, because that really popped off of there. come down here and there. You just want to put it wherever. Give it that illusion. That there's snow happening. Just want to put it here and there. A little bit. Maybe back here you won't be able to see them too much. But we'll put some on there anyways. Because we know that the trees have some of the snow on there. Back there. I'm just tapping the brush, getting some white. All I'm doing is tapping. Load a little bit on the brush like that. And just tap it. Barely touching. Here and there. A little bit. Tap. Little bits. A little bit on the edge, right on the tip of the brush. All that's kind of doing is just giving it that, that illusion. here and there. Maybe near the bottom of the tree. You always got more snow down there where it might build up. Where it like melts down and falls off the tree. 
kind of look at nature. You know, when you're out, if you're in, a, in, in an area where there's a lot of snow or whatever, go out there and take a look next time. Next time there's snow on the trees. And see where it, see how it accumulates. And you'll see that this is pretty pretty close to what you want. And you're just tapping it here and there. You're not tapping it all, all the way down like you're making a tree. You just want to get that illusion of some, some snow. Leaving some spots open. Just like that. I'm going to put some over here and more on this side here. Here and there. Where the snow might might have been built up. More snow there. Looks pretty good. Now we're going to take that fan brush with the green on it. And we're going to come in with some dark green. And we're going to put a little piece of land here. We can tap up or tap down. Lay of the land. Same thing over here. So peace. That didn't get covered. Or it melted here because of the because of the sun. I know it's not sunny out, it's a moon tonight, but it hit there a little bit more than anywhere else. And you got that creation. We got that happening. I'm going to take the liner brush. We're going to load it up with some brown paint. We're going to put some twigs in. A little bit of brown and maybe some liquid white and we're going to come in here and maybe put one that goes who knows just like that maybe maybe it's got something that comes out like this Who knows? Just load them like one side of the brush. And you can come in here and pull things up. Maybe over here there's some. Just a little here and there. There and here. Little bit of dark stuff coming. Maybe we'll highlight this a little bit more here. like that. Now we'll come in here and take the fan brush with the paint on it, with the green on it. And I'm just going to wipe it off and come in here and pull up a little bit. Just with the corners. Get some grassy areas happening. Go 
into your palette knife that we did the other ones. We could scratch the stuff in here. Here and there. Now we got that white. We're going to try to blend and get some of this effect of the snow on this. You're going to pull some of that green off of there. It's automatically going to give you shadow look. Just a shadow look. Just pull it out. Barely touch it. Just pay attention to the land, lay of the land. Here and there, and there and here. That looks like some water coming down. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to drop some stuff in here. Kind of finish that off. That runs who knows where. Maybe it runs over there. Maybe it runs around the corner. Who knows? Now I'm just tapping it in and getting some snow look. Oh, it looks pretty good to me. Let's go in and do something with that moon. Use the blender brush, just a corner. Just going to blend it out. What that's going to do is it's going to give it some effect and soften it like it did. And I tell you what, I think that's a completed painting. What I'm going to do is sign it in the corner. Uh, some people like using their last name. Some people use their initials. I like using my last name. And I usually sign it in the bottom corner here. And what we like to do too, what's a good idea, is to put the year, the year it was painted. Sometimes you might do a few paintings and somebody might ask you, you know, when did you do that? Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. It's a little different. It's got some lightning coming down and a real winter scene. And uh, I'll be doing more. I've got uh, volumes 1, lessons up to 30, and I'm starting volume 2 now. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you come back and see me. Have a nice day. Bye.
Getting warm out there. I was sweating. Nobody called? Going on here. 